Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Ms. Moore, for your introduction. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'd like to give gratitude and thanks to the Almighty God and my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for being able to, for me to open many Amen. opportunities and the things that's happening uh, this past year and a couple months that it opened my eyes to realize to see things that's happening so I give him the, the honor for him. Uh, I'd also like to thank my family, my father, my sister, and my mother who couldn't be here. Uh, but I know she's glad that uh, my sister videotaping me uh, <laughs> because she was so hyped about me sharing the story. So she really wanted, since you couldn't be here, she had she wanted to ask my sister to uh, to film this speech that I'm about to present to you all. Uh, secondly, I'd like to give thanks to the Georgia Department of Vocational Rehabilitation. I would like to thank my counselor, Ms. Sandra Hudson, <coughs> for, who is and Kathy Manuel as well. I appreciate them because they gave me the opportunity to able to open doors as well. And when they gave me the opportunity uh, earlier this uh, early last that when they gave me the option to speak <coughs> in front of you all. I had no choice but to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what well, better opportunity to be able to network and meet people and to actually to share your story with others as well. Uh, to, I see a, other, a lot of people from Vocation Rehabilitation, uh, the Stoner, Ms. Teresa Roberts, and uh, as well as others who I see for uh, the Rehabilitation Center. Well, I'm able to name some, but forgive me. <laughs> and thirdly, I'd like to thank you all for able to be here today. And especially, it's a great gratitude to see people from across the region and the state, uh, to see elected officials. Uh, it's just an honor and humbly for me to be able to meet the network of other people. And that's well the people who's here today, people, as I see a diverse people, and I see people who have disabilities, I'm very humble and grateful that you all, you all are here, and people who are other, who work in other fields as well, I'm able, I'm glad to be able to share with you all with my story. As stated, I am a client representative for the Joint Department of Labor, Vocational Rehabilitation, I am now a senior at Albany State University major in technology management. Uh, prior to my study at Albany State University, I earned my associate's degree in technology management. And I'm also a native of Albany, Georgia as well. I'm a 2008 graduate of Doherty Comprehensive High School. And for the past three and a half years, the vocational rehabilitation has helped me with my necessities, not only financially, but as well for my future to further my education, my career. So what made me choose vocational rehabilitation? Before I moved, before I moved to this section of this part of the set of this story, I will share with you my humbly beginnings that led me for, that led me to have the position for vocational rehabilitation to come to help me further my career and my education. I was born in Kemp Lejeune, North Carolina. I'm the son of Beanie and Deborah Rutz. I'm the third of four children. I'm the only son, I'm the only boy in the family, so I had three sisters. So it was, it was a great childhood. I have family who very supported me in everything I did. The most amazing part of living in Kemp Lejeune was the, the diversity that I was was that I was faced with, that I had dealt with a lot. My father was a Marine, uh, was honorable Marine for the past uh, 21 years as, we, as he retired when we moved to Auburn, Georgia. I had the school, as a child, I was a shy student. I was a shy kid. I really didn't have a lot of friends. I really didn't talk until I was at age four. 
So there was a lot of obstacles I had to deal with. But during kindergarten, I had to take speech re speech classes that helped me to speak, uh, to be able to pronounce words and to to correct my grammar and correct the, the tenses of the words I was using as I was speaking socially. When I moved, when I was seven years old, I moved from Capitol Hill, North Carolina to Albany, Georgia. Here in Albany, Georgia, my mother is a native. So, because we have great, my parents who are no longer with us, they stay in Albany, Georgia, so we moved with them before we branched out and we had a house while my dad was in the military, still in the military station in Orlando, Florida. And when I moved to Albany, Georgia, I had to deal with a lot of challenges. I had to adapt different environments and different transitions that made my challenges more difficult to cope with. In the second grade, I, had, I still had the disability of speech impediment. But however, when I dealt with my teachers, <coughs> certain teachers that I had, who thought that I was not equipped enough to take classes with regular students who didn't have disabilities. And there was even a talk about uh, me taking classes with students who have disabilities and who, who have uh, as well disabilities as in people who were not able to make, to graduate with a degree later on in high school. And there were even talks about that that a lot of teachers, many teachers thought that I was equipped enough to take regular classes with students. They thought that I would take lower level classes. And to me, it really, it really affected my family and affected my mother as well. And my mother had to fight a lot for me to stay on top of me to and talk to the teacher to move me to take regular classes with the students. So they decided they would let me take classes with students where in the regular level classes, because in elementary school you have students who were who have higher level classes, like they take like my like AP classes, not really AP, but kind of higher level classes where they have students who can who can read sixth grade levels while they were in elementary school, I was kind of more of, you know, I was, I was able to read levels of my own, you know, grades, such as second or third grade levels. So that really helped me to be able to help, that, that led me to be able to help me to be in a position to apply myself to not only prove the teacher's wrong, but also prove myself that I had to have the tough mentality of how I carry myself and how I should be able to conduct myself to, to have a share of excellence in myself. Um, my deficiency in was affecting my social life, most importantly. There was a time that, to speak, my disability led me to have low confidence in myself. It led me to have less friends, and most importantly, it led me to feel less valuable as an individual because there were times I felt like I wasn't smart enough or I, I didn't feel like I was able to be capable to be like other regular students um, who didn't have disabilities. From kindergarten and senior year of high school, I took speech classes, and the thing that I learned while I took these speech classes was I was a lifelong learner. I was open to learning. I was able to adapt what other people put the level <coughs> in me to be able to adapt to make better opportunity for myself for my future. Um, when the another deficiency that I went through was in the seventh grade was in December 29, 2002, I was diagnosed with central auditory processing disorder. And with central auditory processing disorder, it's a disorder where it's not that, it's, it's, kind of, it's not really a hearing def, uh, deficiency, but it's more of a mental aspect of it. 
where I had trouble following multi uh, steps or I have problems as well maybe hearing what other people, if I have a conversation with someone and the person says something to me, I may have, it takes a while for the brain to process. So I really had, so it was really challenging for me to have conversation with people. However, I did not let the disability define, to prevent me from stopping where I was going. I became active, I became confident in myself as well to overcome the odds. While I was in high school at Doherty Company, the high school, I achieved many accomplishments due to my work, uh, doing organization work as well. And with being involved in the community and being involved in network, working with other people, it really brought in my mindset and it really kind of burst me out of coming out of my shell where I became more active. I was becoming more sociable with people. And I was also in high school, I succeeded, succeeded my studies while becoming an understood and intelligent leader and a leader that both of my peers and instructors really respected. Uh, after graduating from Doherty Conference of High School in 2008, I made a decision to start my college career at Albany Technical College. And the people who were close to me, uh, we, it raised a lot of eyebrows because people thought, why would a person like myself would attend who has a lot of intelligence who, <clears throat> who overcome the odds who go start at a technical school because when I was three or four or five years ago by the time I was coming out of high school people really didn't believe that if you had a vocational degree people would think that you know you're not really amount up to nothing than a person who graduated four year school so I had to hear the over, I had to hear a lot of skepticism and the doubts that people have had uh, when they told me. However, I was still determined. I, was, I fight not only to just to prove people, but I had to prove myself again that I had to do what I have to do to be able to succeed. And at Albany Technical College, uh, I learned a lot of new things, and I really ha and I'm very glad that I attended that school because it really helped me. They really helped me to transform my mindset of how I apply things, how I apply in my study habits, and how I apply in my learning methods. And also, it taught me how to stay humble, where I seen people who graduated from higher education who, who had obtained a degree in all these technical colleges because they wanted a better life. And also, I saw people who were laid off, uh, this is around the time in 2008 when the recession was just starting to occur where it knocked a lot of people out from employment. So people had to come to Albany Technical College, a technical school like Albany Technical College to obtain to make a better life for their, not only for themselves but for their family. And financially, uh, the reason why I enjoyed Albany Technical College was financially. Uh, it was very, it was very lenient, it, was, it wasn't really hard, uh, the tuition wasn't really high, it was very affordable, so it was easier for my family uh, to pay for my tuition. <coughs> and while I was at Albany Technical College, I, was, I still had the dream and the to be the best student I could be. I was a diligent student, I was a community leader, and I was involved in Phi Beta Lambda, and in April of 2010, I graduated honors with a GPA of 3.4. During the time when I was at Albany Tech, I was introduced to vocational rehabilitation uh, my freshman year. After numerous meetings to know what what the mission was and how, and they, they missed to aid students who have disabilities to secure their college career, I really had no choice but to uh, just let the opportunity for them to help me out to reach where I need, where I want to go. And now that I, I'm at Albany State University and close to graduation, I'm glad to say that the case rehabilitation 
Ken had ultimately helped me to help reach my goal, reach my goals financially, uh, and as well and my personal goals as well as a student. Uh, I'm glad to say I'm very blessed for their for, what, for their services because now I don't really have to worry about you know as no you know college kids would think like college like student loans anything. Like, <laughs> I mean, when, I mean, I've talked to so many students who have student loans after graduation, and it just made me like. Like, I'm just so glad I don't even have to go through that, you know. I, had, <laughs> I just had, you know, great support services as well, and also have Hope Scholarship as well. So it really helped me balance out, you know, and made me thankful for what I had that many people don't, many people wish they have. Um, I'm grateful to be partnered with VR because they value me to be an advocate for students who have disabilities. And there's one thing that my mother always taught me uh, when I grew older. She always told me, no matter what, when you graduate and you go for your career, don't forget the people who helped you to get there. That's right. You know, don't worry about, I mean, she told me, you know, be an advocate for the people that you want to reach out there. And I feel like in my heart that the people who touched me most was the people with disabilities. Because everything I had to overcome to get where I am now, is speaking in front of a lot of people and speaking in front of respectable uh, state and local uh, representatives is a truly a blessing. And just be able to to accomplish a whole lot in college, you know, to be a, to overcome from what people thought that they want you to become something, they want you, what they thought you were, but you prove what you, what you really not. You know, I, I am glad to say that the, the accomplishments I achieved, it wasn't for me. I really believe that God places accomplishments that He had me to experience, to share it to other people. And I want to share it to the people, uh, people as well in my heart, people who have disabilities, that no matter what, you know, you can achieve everything. No matter what obstacles come, you you can overcome everything that, that's come in your face that you have to encounter. And I'm glad to say, or I just learned yesterday, that not only did I want scholarships, I'm also I had a perfect semester yesterday where I checked my grades. I had a 4.0 uh, semester. <laughs> but I just like to uh, be a living testimony for everyone. Uh, either if you have a disability or not, but don't, lim don't let your limitations be the stop holder where it limits you from doing something that you're capable of doing. Because with my faith and the support system I had, it pushed me to become an excellent, not only excellent a student leader, but as well as a person where mediocrity is not an option, where excellence is a mentor for everything because you teach people that with a driven mindset of operating in excellence, you overcome a lot of things that you thought that no, that people would, would thought it would, it would be hard. And I'm just grateful to be able to share the story with you all. And I, if you, there's nothing else that you all, if there's nothing else you all could take this, I want to let you all know that in life, there's a, purpose in every outcome. And the outcome it may not be something that we have to accept, we may not like it, but it's there for a reason. And for the, to those who have or who have disabilities or know someone who have disabilities, I want you to encourage that person to continue to push them to be something that they have potential of becoming. Don't let their limitations limit them from being what they're supposed to be. 
There's a purpose behind every outcome, but with faith, you know, through Christ, all things are possible if you just believe. And I think vocational rehabilitation for being able to lend a helping hand and help me to get through where I, where I had to to overcome. And this was a touching moment for me. And I just thank you all for listening, for able to share my story with you all, and I appreciate you all. God bless. Thank you. I would venture to say we are the ones that are blessed. <laughs>